Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Larabelle Lair tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at making the snap fit ornament that you might have seen. So over the holiday break, uh, we released this snap fit ornament project. It takes a, a sphere, splits it in half, and allows you to snap fit them together. That's pretty neat. Let's take a look at it in the overhead, just kind of review it a little bit. And right over here. So this is it. Um, this is the, this <laughs> kind of a fun thing in here is that it has a spinning insert. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're just going to focus on actually creating the snap fit part. So let's go ahead and take this out. And how do you open this thing, right? So you, you can you can try to pull it apart, but it's pretty tough in there. It holds it nice. And I have a tiny bit of wiggle in there. That's just some some wiggle room for uh, the tolerances to work out with the with three D printing. So the way to open it is you can actually get with that little bit of tolerance there. You can manage to get your fingernails in between the two uh, surfaces, and then just kind of pop them open like that, and then it just opens like that. Uh, something that makes this really nice and easy isn't just a design, but the material. So this is not PLA. This is PET G or PETG. And what's cool about that is that it allows parts to have this bit of flexibility to it. So I'm flexing this out right now, and this really helps snap fit geometry uh, make it easier to open. And it's actually stronger than PLA in some certain uh, situations. Uh, so if you are new to uh, 3D printing with PETG, uh, definitely check it out. You don't need to change too much of your slice settings. Uh, for me, I keep the same speeds and uh, just print hotter, like at 240 to 250. But it depends on your setup. So to bring these back together, um, well, first let's take a look at the, the actual pieces that snap. These are the kind of grabbers. So this these four tabs grab onto uh, the little nubs are on the inside of this rim. And then you'll see that there's these little teeth. So there's four sets of teeth. And those little teeth are actually just some blockers to to uh, keep the tabs, these tabs here, they're kind of short in length, they keep them in place. If you did not have these tabs and if you just had this sweep across the entire uh, rim, then when you put these together, it would just keep spinning and uh, that might not be useful. Uh, that might be useful for certain projects, but for this one, if you have some things like on the outside here that need to match up, this works out really well. Uh, if you if you do if you were to do a co a coil system where it would uh, twist together, then you have to worry about uh, lining up the uh, the geometry or the design features. So to bring this back together, I just grab one of these tabs and start fitting it in. It's a little bit hard to see, but it, it grasps onto that first nub, and then we can get the second bit in there. Just wiggle it a little bit, so you can see I got those two tabs in there, and then if I flip it over, you can see these uh, these other two tabs uh, still aren't closed, so we just bring them together and gives you a nice satisfying click. And there is a little bit of wiggle room, but that's necessary uh, to keep these guys, uh, make, to make it easier uh, to get your fingers in there and pop it back open. And I've been doing this many, many, many times and it hasn't broken yet, which is, which is great. Let me knock on the wood here. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and see how to uh, put together this sort of design. So here I'm in Fusion and I'm just gonna close this document and start a new one, All right? I do have the design file available if you want to just grab the design file. Um, I have it as a Fusion 360 uh, file and also as a step model on the Thingiverse page. So check that out if you'd like. Um, so let's create a new tab and start working on it. So if this is going to work for uh, spherical things like this snap fit ornament, and it also works with cylinders. So if you're doing a cylinder and you need to snap those two together, uh, this will work just fine with it. Just a little bit of different uh, sketches for it. So let's start off with uh, creating this as a parametric model. So I want to use some user parameters so we can tweak it later. So let's uh, define a diameter for like our ornament. So I'll make it 60. Let's define a thickness for our shell, the thickness of our, our, our kind of walls. So I'm going to make it one and a half millimeters. And then we want to add uh, our tolerance bit. I'm going to call it gap because it's a gap between the two mating surfaces. Uh, and I like to use 0 0.02, so you can adjust that. And then um, I think snaps. So how big, how tall do we want our snap features to be? I want it to be two millimeters uh, tall or big. So that's really all the the parameters that I need to set up for this one so I can make it easy to adjust. So hit OK. Now I'm going to work on uh, kind of structuring our components. So let's create, I want everything to be inside of one component. Uh, so I'll make like this called like the master component. Uh, in this case, we're making a, a sphere, so let's just call it the sphere. And then inside the sphere, we'll create another component, and we'll call this the top half. And then we need to create 
we need to select the sphere because we want to make another component and call this the bottom half. Like that. Okay, so now we have our structure set up. Sphere, bottom half, top half. So let's go ahead and grab our, or uh, activate the top half because we want to work on that. Looking at my view, my, uh, my view cube here, this is the front, this is the right side. So I'm going to sketch right on this plane here. So I'll create a new sketch and then I'll hover right over this plane, which is our kind of side plane. If, you're, if this is our front, then this is like our side. All right, so looking at it from here, I'm going to create our first circle. And it's going to be in the center origin of our grid. So I'll click on that. And then for the number here, the dimension, I'll just type in diameter and hit enter. Now I want to create the, uh, the thickness for our sphere. So I'll create an offset. So I'll hit the O key for offset and then just click on that circle that we did. And then uh, do you want this to be on the inside or the outside? I want this to be on the inside of our, of our user parameter value. So I'll go negative, and then I want to make this the thickness value, which is thickness, and that's 1.5 millimeters. I'll hit OK. So now I have that. Cool. So now what I plan to do here is to create a, uh, basically use a revolve to create our dome. So I can't revolve this yet because I need to have just a little bit of it. So I need to intersect. I need a line to intersect and kind of create uh, a profile that I can revolve. So using my line tool, I'll just uh, start from the center. And then I'll work my way over to this area. You notice when I roll over uh, the circle edge here, you get that little X. That lets me know it's going to give it a coincident um, constraint. So I'll click there. And now whenever I move this line, it'll always be coincident with the actual outside. So all I got to do now is just uh, make this a straight, as straight as possible. Easiest way to do that is to apply a horizontal constraint. So now it's constrained there. I don't need a dimension or anything because, uh, well, this has the dimension. Cool. Now I have that little piece. Now I just need another piece, uh, another line that will create that intersection. So bring up my line tool, start from the center again, and then just go all the way up. And again, roll over the edge here. You get that little X. That gives me a coincident constraint, and then I can uh, select that line, apply a horizontal constraint. So now I have this little sliver here, right? That this little uh, kind of quarter of a sphere, and now I can revolve. So let's go ahead and bring up our sketch uh, shortcut toolbox, and then uh, just type in revolve. So like that. That is already selected as my profile, and now I need to select the axis, x Ax axis, yeah. So. Uh, I can just select this line here, the top one, the one going up and down on the Z. And there we go. We get a nice preview of our half dome. So hit OK. So now we got our half dome. And I want to be able to see inside of it, like a cross section of it. So I'll, I'll go under uh, Inspect, Section Analysis, and I'll select this guy here, this plane, and hit OK. So now I can see inside of it. Cool. So this is going to be our top half. And with the top half, I want to add those triangular nubs that our bottom half will catch on to. So to do that, I'll create a new sketch, uh, draw it on the same um, left and right uh, plane. And then I need to kind of draw a triangle somewhere on this edge here, around here. So let's bring out our line tool and just kind of flesh out a, a quick triangle without applying any uh, dimensions to it. Automatically, Fusion added a horizontal constraint, horizontal vertical constraint, which is great. That's what I want. Uh, but now for this right here, I need this to be a perfect 45 degree angles here. So I'll select these two, hold down shift, and then bring up the dimension tool. And now I can apply a 45 degree angle. Now I also want this top half to be at a 45 degree, degree angle. But instead of applying a degree angle to that, I'll just make these two lines perpendicular. And that'll make it nice and uh, perpendicular. So now I can uh, drag this and make this whatever size. I already have a user parameter designed, uh, a designated for this. So I'll drag this out and type in S A S N A P for snap, snaps, hit enter, and there's our snap. So now I have our little snap triangle. And I can move this around anywhere. So I need to place this somewhere around here on the edge, the inner edge. And uh, the best way to do that for me is to use the line tool, click on that center there, and then click on this center origin here. Bam. OK, so now I have that. Now I want to make this line as straight as possible. So just select the line and apply a vertical constraint to it. Now you can see here that uh, now I can move this only in one uh, degree. And I need this to be as, as, kind of, as kind of close to this as possible. So what I could do is I could just uh, apply a dimension to that line. It's actually going to be 
our diameter, but because we're doing it in the center, uh, the half of it, it needs to be the radius of our diameter. So I could just say diameter divided by two and enter. Now see that it placed it in there, but it's on the outs. It, it goes to the outside of our dump because that's how we set up our shell. We made it as a negative value. So now we can go back into this, uh, this uh, dimension and I can say, well, I want it to subtract from the thickness. Enter. You can see we're, we're right where we need to. But if we look very carefully, you'll see that because we are a sphere, um, we're not perfectly straight because it's not a cylinder, really. It's a spherical item geometry. So what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of material to our top half so that it straightens out right here and just goes straight up. So it's really easy to do that. We can just come into our first sketch that created a revolve and then use the line tool. And all I need to do is just kind of create a line somewhere around here that goes straight up. So let's click right here and you'll, you'll see that it is indeed, uh, yeah, I rolled over it. I had that X, so I have that uh, connection, that coincident constraint. And then I need this to come up up to this edge here. You see I have the X again, so I know I'm gonna get a coincident uh, constraint there. So I want this to be as straight as possible, so with it selected, let's apply that horizontal vertical constraint, and there it is. Now we need to just apply a dimension that will tell this guy to be a certain distance away from our center. So with that selected, bring up our dimension tool, and I click on the center here. And I can tell this to be how big, how, I can tell this to be a certain size, certain length. So with our user parameters, let's go ahead and do our diameter divided by two minus thickness. But we want to add a little bit away from that thickness. So what we can do is we can put our thickness value into a parentheses, and then we can do some more math, simple math inside here. So we want to say thickness plus one, hit enter. And you can see that it's now given us that extra millimeter here. And that's going to be great because now if we ever change our diameter, this is going to be nice. It, it's going to have that fixed number, but it's going to allow our geometry to be nice and straight and flush so we can add our snap fit G, uh, features to it. If you were doing a cylinder, you wouldn't need to do this because your, your cylinder is already straight up. If you're tapering your cylinder, then you might want to consider doing this. So let's go ahead and hit finish sketch. And then I need to append that little um, profile that we created. So I'll double click on our revolve inside of our timeline. And then with uh, the profile thingy selected, I'll just hold down shift and add that little sliver. You can get a preview here real quick and see that it is indeed making a nice uh, straight uh, cylinder. So I'll hit OK. So now what I can do, actually, let's go back into that uh, sketch, double click on that um, the, the, the dimension that we did. And I'm just going to copy that math, simple math equation, hit OK. Because now I'm going to go back into the second sketch and double click on this thing and then just paste that in there right there. So now our snap is exactly where we want it to be. It's exactly flush with this nice and straight geometry. Very cool. So now we have a profile that we can create our first snap. Let's turn off analysis and get a look at it like that. Okay. So instead of doing a revolve, I found the sweep feature to, to work really well here. So let's pull out our sweep, a sweep like that. Our profile will be our little triangle. And then our path is this inner circle here like that. By default, it's going to go around the entire path. We want to limit that to just a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll put zero or point. <clears throat> you have to be careful with the fusions text inputs. They're a little bit flaky sometimes. So I'll put zero, I'll put point zero two. Okay. And then I'll go into the second distance and do the same value of point zero two. All right. So you see, we have a little bit of a, of a nub here. I actually want to increase that number to three. So it gives me a little bit longer sweep. And that's looking okay to me. If we wanted to, we could apply the, uh, uh, we could apply a, uh, a user parameter, but I don't think I need to in this case. So I'll hit okay. Now we have that, excellent. So now we need to have this, um, this sweep duplicated or patternized circularly along the rim of our, uh, of our top, top half dome. So let's go ahead and bring up our circular pattern and pattern type, make sure it's set to features. And then for the objects, I'll just select that first sweep in our timeline. And then for the axis, it'll be that blue line that shows up here because that's our um, Z axis, that's our Z axis. There you go. The default quantity is three. That'll work okay. Um, I wonder if you can do two. Yeah, you can do two, but uh, I think you'll get way more secure, way, way more, a better fit if you have four of them. Three will work fine, but I'm gonna go with four. So hit okay. So now you can see we have our nice, 
tabs or nubs <laughs> uh, patternized across their thing. Cool. That's what we want. And if you do a section analysis, you can see that, yeah, that geometry is nice and true. It's all nice and manifold. Excellent. Now we can start working on our bottom half, right? We're going to flesh out the bottom half. So uh, we're looking at it upside down. So let's look at it right side up. All right, there's our view cube. Front is the front, and these are the sides. So let's create our um, our, our kind of profile to create a revolve because we kind of do the same dance here. So I'll create a sketch, draw it on this side plane. And then from the center, I'll create a circle. And we'll give it that diameter, use a parameter. And then um, I'm not in the center. How funny. Let's just drag it into the center. That little triangle or the little square there lets me know it's going to lock it in there with a uh, coincident constraint, which is what we want. All right, so that's correct. And then I'll do an offset to create our thickness. It needs to be a negative value, negative thickness. That gives us that. And then we need to create our lines that will kind of create our intersections for creating the revolve. So what I can do here is I will click from the center and just um, make sure that uh, the second point is has that X. So I know that I'm going to be coincident with that. And then uh, I'll do another one, the center down over here instead of going up because we're the bottom half now. All right, so let's straighten out these lines, select them both and apply a horizontal constraint. There we go. Right, so now I have this sliver that I can revolve. So let's do that. Let's bring it up, revolve, and then uh, axis. It could be the blue line or it could be this line, whichever one you like. And there is our bottom half dome. So you see here, we kind of need to do the same thing, right? Where we have that little sliver here. So let's go back into our um, our, our sketch, and then we're gonna kind of do the same thing somewhere around over here. Click, and then make sure that yeah, that it's coincident by seeing the the visual Q, visual X. Okay. So now I need to make that straight, horizontal, vertical, and then we need that distance, that equation that I think is still on my clipboard. So I want this to be a certain distance away from our center. Paste, yes, it's still in there. So hit OK, and that is the exact same. Excellent. Finish the sketch, double click the revolve in our timeline, and then just append that guy by holding down Command or Option to, to, to add to that um, profile selection. And that's looking good. Hit OK. Cool. So now we have a nice uh, proper geometry where we can create our, our, our grabbers, our kind of grabbers. So uh, we'll create a new sketch again on the side plane, and we're going to start creating our geometry. So the way it's going to happen is, let's zoom in here, the way it's going to happen is it's going to be like, it's going to be something like this. So it's going to be pretty similar. It goes up. I like that Fusion's given me that uh, perpendicular constraint automatically at a 90 degree. And then we'll go out again, back in, and then we want to kind of straighten it out and connect this. So that's what we have here. All right, and I got some automatic constraints, which work out. This one is horizontal. That's what I want it to be. These two are um, perpendicular. And now I want these corners to be perpendicular. So these two, make that perpendicular. All right, cool. And then um, this right here and this right here should be parallel with each other. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to um, create a an easy way for us to kind of match this and this together. So the best way I found to do it is to create a line and connect this corner with this corner like that. And then what we can do is we can grab that line, hit the X key to make it a, a, a construction line so it no longer uh, acts as a uh, profile that we can select. And then I can apply a dimension to that. What's the dimension? It's going to be her snaps because that's set to two. Now you see it kind of went crazy here. Now that's fine. All we got to do is apply some distance or rather just select this line. And I want this to be the thickness value right there. And then for this and this, this one right here, this right here, I want to create some, uh, some distance between this. Let's also go with the thickness of our, of our, um, of our item. So now I can move this whole thing. You see it's all screwy now. I need to add a horizontal constraint to this construction line. So let's just do that real quick. Bam, there it is. Okay, so now I have this geometry. I need to fit this precisely in place with this. Oh, you know what? I forgot to add our, our degrees because right now it's all over the place. So I'll start with these two, these two lines, select it, and then apply a perfectly perfect 45 degree angle. 
And now it, all those constraints, the perpendicular constraints line up and everything's nice and uh, true. So that's cool. So I can drag this around now, sort of. I still need to create a way to make this um, in the precise area where it needs to be. So what I'll do is I'll grab our line tool and it's gonna be this corner that needs to be uh, locked to our center. So I'll click on that point, zoom out, and then select our center origin. Bam, there we go, escape. Now I can apply a horizontal constraint to that line like that, and then I can apply that dimension, which I think is still in my clipboard, yes. And then hit OK. Now you're, you're probably thinking, like, okay, well I need to add some sort of gap, right? I'm not gonna do that in the sketch because I think that's gonna muck up the sketch a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit uh, different, uh, difficult. And you'll see here that line is splitting this into two different profiles. So I'll just select that line, X key. Now it is a construction line, so I can just select this as a one, as a one profile. And I'll show you how to add the gap in here. So now that we have that, we need to start. We need to use a sweep in order to sweep and match the length of our of our nub. So uh, with that profile selected, we'll pull up a sweep, and then we'll select our path. Let's go ahead and hide the top half for a second, and then I'll select this inner bit here. So you can see here again. Turn off the analysis so you can see it. it, it it's doing that whole thing because it's a by default. It just wants to do the whole length of the path that we selected. So. If we remember what our value was, Fusion can kind of tell you it was 0.3, and then this one here is also 0.3. That's neat. Um, but we actually, do we want it to go all the way out? We don't, we actually want it to go inward a little bit, and I'll show you why. So we'll put uh, 2, 8 here, and then 2, 8 here. So it's actually a little bit um, shorter. And you can see here our nub kind of extra, it, it comes out a little bit more. And that's by design, we kind of need that there. Uh, so that we can create our end, our end stops, so that our tabs will be fixed in place and won't will not be able to be rotated out of place. So we got that. I think that's okay. Let's hit okay. If we look at a section analysis, you can see, yep, these surfaces have no clearance between them, and we can do that now. So what we'll do is uh, I use the press pull command, which is really nice. So I'll just select these two surfaces first. Hit the hotkey, it's Q for me, and that creates an offset face. Um, so uh, the offset type should be uh, new offset. And then for my distance, I'm just gonna type in gap because that's already set up as a user parameter, hit okay. Okay, and that was a positive value by the way. Now I need to go on the inside here. Let's turn off our top half and then select these two surfaces from the inside of the snap. And then again, Q, it automatically sets that to an offset face. It's a new offset. I need this to go inward, so we're gonna go negative, negative, gap. There we go. So if we bring back the top half, just to visualize, visually see our, our clearance between the two, they are indeed, if I select this surface and then this surface, you'll see, yep, minimum distance is 0.2 millimeters. Exactly precise. Cool. Well, now we need to figure out how do I create those end stops so that this, so that there's some geometry on this um, area that will stop this from being moved out of place. So what we need to do is go back to our top half, okay? And then what we can do is go into the uh, the sketch that creates our little nub. Let's go in there, and we're gonna add some more lines to this to create an end stop. So the end stop just needs to kind of be more material that is uh, kind of bigger than this, the bigger than the nub itself. So to kind of follow the same uh, Geometry, I'm gonna kind of draw another kind of chevron shape. But like this. Let's hide our body real quick so I can get a better look at just our shapes. See that, the way this did not connect? I could just drag this and drop it there. And then I think that's okay. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make this diagonal line per, uh, parallel with, with, our, with the, this line here because it already has that 45 degree um, constraint. So I'll say you need to be parallel. And then now these two lines can be perpendicular and now I can apply some dimensions to this to smooth it out. So let's uh, do a distance from here to here. Let's just say one millimeter and then from here to here one millimeter. If you're if you have something that needs space you could go a little bit smaller um, as long as it's I guess under a half a millimeter it's fine. 
So now that we have that, um, we can pull back our, our body so we can see it. And then we'll hit OK. All right, so now how do we add that to here? Well, the best way I found is to, let's go ahead and hide our bottom half for a second and then turn off the analysis real quick. And here I am. All right, so what I want to do now is actually go into our, our, uh, our sweep and actually add this profile that we created. Okay, that's cool. So now that's sweeping that whole thing as a, as a unit. I'll hit okay. What we got to do now is though, uh, we kind of have to backtrack. We kind of got to not delete. Let's see if we, the Fusion's smart enough to do this. Let's hit the back button here. So now I am still, I'm in the timeline where I haven't done a pattern yet. And I want to add another sweep to this, right? So let's bring out our sketch and then we'll make another sweep. And then we'll select just that outer profile, not the nub, but the outer profile. And then for our path, we'll select um, our guy here, our, our, our inner circle. You can see it's cutting the whole thing. Well, if we start adding uh, those values to it, um, it'll just do a little bit of it. So I'll say zero, uh, 0 0.02 and then 0 0.02. Fusion gave me an error. I'm not sure why. It's saying that the something about the path, it doesn't like it, right? So let's get rid of that path because it's not a complete circle, I guess. And we'll select this one because it's pretty close to it. Um, the sweeps can work like that. And okay, we got to update our distance, get rid of that one and put 0 0.02. And then same over here. Come on, come on text fields, 0 0.02. And then you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm now chiseling out, cutting away from that bigger uh, snap and then just leaving behind our, our little nub here. So hit okay. And then hide our sketch so we can actually see our geometry. So you can see here, it looks a little bit weird, but that is our geometry. That's what we need. Um, and then, you know, to smooth this out a little bit, it looks like it's gonna hurt my hands. So what I can do is I can add some fillets to it, to these uh, to these edges here. This one, this one. And let's go ahead and do these two as well, those edges on the side. And I'll just put a one, and that kind of rounds it off nicely. Cool. All right, so now I have this bit. Now I want to repeat this bit across uh, our inner diameter four times. So if I hit the forward button in our timeline, you'll see that our, our, um, our this guy, our circular pattern only has those features that we selected previously. So let's double click in there and see if Fusion is able to append new ones. I don't think it is, not in this update. So I'll hit X on our objects and then I'll select this sweep, this sweep. You see, it's not working, see? In this case, you're gonna have to delete this one feature, just kill it, we'll just do it again. It's not that hard. So uh, circular pattern, features, objects, well, these two sweeps and our fillet. Our axis is that blue line. Quantity, four, hit enter, and that's it. I wanted to test Fusion just to see if it was able to append circular patterns because uh, for, for a couple of years, I don't know, it hasn't been able to ever since I started. Um, maybe they'll, they'll fix that one day. Not fix, it's not a fix, it's more of a feature. All right, so now we have that. And if we bring back our bottom half, <laughs> it's hiding, it's somewhere. I need to get it into this main uh, component. And you can see here, because I was moving the timeline, uh, none of this stuff happened yet. So let me just forward back in future time. And there we go. All right, let's turn on the section analysis again so we can get inside there. And we can start seeing our snap for the bottom half here. All right, we need to see if, um, yeah, you can see it is indeed crashing into it. So our sweep from here needs to be a shorter number. So I'll go into that feature in the timeline and bring this to 0 0.028 even further down to like uh, maybe just 0.2. No, that doesn't work. But, hmm. Yeah, you can see here. Um, now we could use that press and pull thing, but I could just make this a little bit smaller or taller. I mean, it's kind of difficult to get in there. Um, so we can do what, 0 0.018. That way it has a tiny bit of gap between them. And then over here again, 0 0.018 and hit okay. Now let's turn off our section analysis so I can kind of, oh yeah, I can't get in there now at all, can I? Whoa, that's fun. Um, 
yeah, we're gonna have to use our section analysis. Yeah, so you can see uh, we can use our um, our little. Um, let's just use the eye. So hit I to measure the distance between this edge and this surface, and you can see it's 0.324. Not a perfect number, but uh, it's it's good enough for me. It's pretty close to our gap, so that's looking good. All right, so now uh, so that's that that is set up there and. If we don't like the length of our tab, maybe it's too small for us. Uh, we could we could just play with the the sweep value in the other in the top half and make it wider or taller as we want. But this is nice now. I can actually apply a uh, a thing to it. I kind of want to add a chamfer to this edge here. Let's just do that. Let's like put 0.4 or maybe 0.5. It's half a millimeter. And hit OK just to kind of smooth that out a little bit. We could have did a radius too. I mean a fillet, but whatever. All right, now let's do their circular pattern. Whoops, circular pattern. And then uh, for the features, we'll select uh, our first sweep, our two offsets, and our chamfer. For the axis, blue line, <laughs> uh, quantity four, right? And hit okay. So there we go, there's our four tabs. And here is our top half. We can't see anything. <laughs> We need to section analysis that. So you can get in there and see. That's looking pretty good. All right. Now, kind of a problem here is that the the bottom half cannot be printed unless there's a bunch of supports because it's completely uh, round here. So what we can do is we can, uh, in my case, my ornament, it worked out really well because, well, it has flat bottoms on either end, kind of, right? This one has a little kind of uh, rounded edge here, but you don't need that. However, for this, you do kind of want a flat surface here. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We don't need to add new, I don't think we need to add a new sketch. We could just modify an existing sketch. So what we'll do is we'll go uh, to our bottom half profile, like our main profile that created our revolve, go in there. And what we'll do is we'll create a line that kind of that kind of goes across our bottom half here like that. Okay, and now I need to figure out how do I make this correct? I, actually, I think we could just roll this over here, connect that with a coincident, and same thing over here, connect that with a coincident. Excellent. So now when I move this around, yeah. How much of a flat surface do you want? Well, we can apply uh, a dimension, say, from here to the end of this point. Let's make it, I don't know, 4. And that'll always update if we change the, uh, the diameter. It'll stay 4. So with that, we can hit finish sketch, double click on that revolve, and then just hold our command or control key and deselect this little sliver here. And you'll see that now it's flat and open. So now we can actually print it because we have enough, we have a flat surface uh, to adhere to the bed of our 3D printer. So we got that. And we can uh, play around with the uh, this number if we want. If we want a bigger opening, double that to eight and that's a bigger opening now. Now, if you wanted to uh, still create it, you could um, come in here, open your sketch, and just create a new body with that main profile, and then super glue it to your thing later. So I can select these two, hit revolve, and then our axis is this, this guy here, and you can see that I'll, I would make it as a new body, and then hit OK, and then you can print this um, this this little portion here and glue it or you can even get fancy and do uh, a coil and screw it onto the bottom if that worked out. Uh, so you can do it like that, but uh, it's nice that uh, you have options and it really depends on your project. Again, if you were just doing a cylinder and not a sphere, then uh, you wouldn't need to do all this extra revolve steps. You would just extrude it up, extrude up your, your circles and then start adding your, uh, your snap fit ge uh, geometry on the inside of your cylinder or even on the outside if you wanted to have another cylinder kind of clep onto the outside of it. You can do that too. That's pretty much it, I think. And we're gonna go ahead and delete, or, or just hide this bottom here, that little extra nub there. So there you go. So you would print this bottom half where this would touch the bed, and then our top half, you just print it as is. And you can see here with my top half, I didn't even bother to open the top. You could do the exact same thing. Um, where I create a line in our profile and deselect it from our uh, revolve, and that would work too. So the last thing we can do is we need to kind of test out our user parameters. 
will it actually work? Will it actually scale? Well, let's try it out. Let's pull up our user parameter window. Let's move it in a nice spot. And let's start little numbers. Let's add 10 to this, so 70. OK, that didn't break. 80, 90. How about 300 millimeters? Holy bejesus. Now you can see our snaps need to get bigger because it just doesn't look right in terms of the scale. Four, eight, ten. And you can see our thickness is starting to look a little bit small too. Let's double that, three. Oh my goodness, it's working. Well, that's how you know we did it right. <laughs> you want more gap? All right, 0.4. More gap. Make a one millimeter gap. Now it's really loosey goosey. Holy moly. <laughs> so would this actually work? The answer is yes, I've already done it. Go to, if you go to our, um, our Thingiverse page, we actually have a, a jumbo version of this, which works out really, it's comically big. Let's take a look at a photo of it. I don't have it here in my desk because it's in our attic because <laughs> the holidays are over. But uh, hey, look, the thing is massive. So we printed this on our CR-10S, 300 millimeter diameter. Here's uh, Pedro with his son, Gavin. He's got the little one and Gavin's got the big one. It's comically large. It's so funny. But the snaps worked out really well. It took two days to print, but it's really cool. And I also have this as a download. So you can download the Fusion file if you want. But you could just make your own, your own recipe, and you have your own kind of thing. Now, obviously, there's more things that you could add to it. You could uh, add like the little holder bit and an inner frame that holds a, uh, a thing that, that, uh, that spins, whatever, whatever. Oh, this is actually the big one. That's funny. And uh, if you want to add electronics to it and use this sort of same snap fit circular thing, we did that with our Circuit Playground Gizmo ornaments. So we did this three different ways where uh, it's pretty gnarly. Let me show you in the overhead here, the way it snaps. So it's this and how do you get electronics in there? So you see that it actually isn't just a straight up extrude of a cylinder. It is starting to curve. So this originally was or is a, uh, a, a full a, a sphere. So this is actually three pieces. This is like a front cover. It has the same type of snaps. The tolerances are a little bit more tighter in there because I didn't want a lot of clearance between them. So it might be a little bit difficult for me to open it, but I can if I get in there nice enough and just get my fingernail to do that. And then you see this pop pops off and those are those snaps. They're the grabbers. And then you can see here, I got those teeth, four sets of teeth there. And then this is also two pieces. So I can come in here and do the same thing. I guess I could try to. Yeah, that's better here. And then just open that out. So I have this little piece here. And this is way over engineered, huh? And then this is being held in with even more snaps. So I can take that out. These screws here are just um, for the display here, the e ink display. And that's how it's making electrical connections with the screws themselves and these uh, bolt on standoffs. All right, so that's a, a, a nice look at uh, creating some snap fit geometry for spheres and cylinders. I hope you learned a lot, and I'd love to see folks use this technique in their projects. And if you do, hit me up on all the socials. I have links in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.